Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. We want to tell you about an op-ed that ran in the New York Times over the weekend you might not have seen. The writer, who's a law professor in New York called Echo Yonka, asked a simple question. Can my children be friends with white people? Uh, he really asked it and he wasn't optimistic. Quote, I will teach my boys the lesson generations old, he wrote. I will teach them to be cautious. I will teach them suspicion. I will teach them distrust. I will teach my boys to have profound doubts that friendship with white people is possible. Well, those doubts mirrored the writer's own. As he put it, quote, history has provided little reason for people of color to trust white people. That piece was one of the most popular on the New York Times website, even today. It was hardly unusual, though. Go to any liberal website, Salon, Slate, Vox, HuffPo, and you'll find similar pieces arguing that an entire racial group is untrustworthy and dangerous. This is a big change for the left. For most of the 20th century, liberals, and it was noble, argued that it was immoral to reward or punish people based on their skin color. Individuals ought to be judged solely by the choices they make. Anything less is bigotry. Liberals don't say that anymore. What happened? Echo Yanka is the author of that New York Times piece. He's a professor at Shiva University's Benjamin Cardozo School of Law, and he joins us tonight. Professor, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. So what struck me about this piece, a couple of different things, but the first thing was the generalizations about a racial group based on their race. And I grew up, probably not so much older than you, in a world where overt expressions of that were not acceptable. You weren't allowed to generalize on the basis of race because the assumption was each person is an individual and you judge each person by the choices he or she makes. I don't understand when it became okay to generalize about racial groups. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a, to me, a strange way to put the question. I mean, while it's the case that we all hope that we can be judged for who we are, I think um, while some people have the luxury to be raised only being told to look at individual people, it should be no surprise to you that black people, in particular black men, have been taught forever that they have to be careful how they behave around white people that the way they behave will be interpreted differently, that when they misbehave, it'll be punished differently, that if they laugh too loud, if they walk into a nice store. So with all due respect, Tucker, um, what was true for you has never been true for lots of people. Well, I mean, I guess, I mean, there are a lot of ways to respond to that. One, on a factual basis, and in truth, in a lot of places in this country, the main threat that African-Americans face is not from white people, as you perfectly well know, but beyond that, the idea that you could understand a person's motive merely by knowing his race dehumanizes that person. It's the definition of racism, and you're engaging in it in the New York Times, and nobody says anything about it. And I just felt it was worth pointing that out and asking you if you feel it's okay to generalize about people you've never met, about whom you know nothing beyond what they look like, and say, I know who you are and what you believe. Uh the, so I first want to respond to the the first comment I think is um, ought not be let lie. While it's true that, of course, people of color face threats from other people of color, it's also true that white people face the overwhelming threat from white people. That is, right. people face threats from who they live beside. So I, That's I, right. I find exactly. it... Exactly. But, but it, I think it's fair to point out that we oughtn't uh, be too distasteful and say things like, well, the, the great threat. It, it, it does feed a certain uglier narrative that we don't want. But to your core point Wait, about... Hold on. Why, why does the truth ever feed a, quote, ugly narrative? The truth is worth telling for its own sake because it's true. You're welcome to tell the truth, but it, it, is, um, it is deeply suspicious that people are so quick to say things like the main threat facing African Americans is other African Americans, but you never hear anybody say the main threat facing white people is white people. Right, so there is no phrase white no, on I white don't, crime. I don't know. I mean, people say that. I mean, I, I guess the, the point is Tucker, you don't should, face a well, threat should, from an entire be... racial group. You face a threat from individuals who've made individual choices. Well, we should turn to that. But uh, just in closing, I should say we should be honest and not pretend that there is a phrase like white on white violence, right? That phrase doesn't exist for very okay, particular reasons. Okay, well, we reasons. can invent it here. But I, I guess the point I'm yeah. making is that you should never generalize about people on the basis of their skin color because it reduces them to the sum total of their skin color. And again, that's the definition of racism. And you're engaging in it in this piece. And, and I just, I don't think it's helpful. I think it's wrong. Well, so I, I just entirely deny that what I said was that you should generalize and dislike people because of their skin color. What I do think is true is that in a world in which things have gotten ever more dangerous for people of color, it is, in fact, the case 
that that undermines our ability to trust each other across racial bounds. And here's what's true, or at least here's what I wrote. Not that white people are unavailable for friendship, but in this world, it is up to our white friends and allies to be sure to stand up for those who are under attack. If I want to prove that I'm the kind of person who can be your friend, that means that when something is actually threatening you, I actually have to be there for you. Okay, but again, you're making generalizations across racial groups. So you say, for example, I will have to discuss with my boys whether they can truly be friends with white people. History has provided little reason for people of color to trust white people. I have profound doubts that friendship with white people is possible. Again, that's these absolutely are right. okay, yeah, but that's absolutely if, right. If, but if I, I was, were to write, mm -hmm. you know, I was mugged as a pizza delivery mm -hmm. boy, and I told my children that they should never trust anyone who looks like the people who mugged me. Mm -hmm. That would be, I would never do that. I think that would be immoral, but it would be the definition of racism because I would be equating the people who mugged me with everyone else who well, looks like them. I think if that's the only part of the article you read, it might sound like that. But of course, the article has uh, a much richer argument. And the argument I make is, look, in a country where it turns out that when the most vulnerable people of color are under threat, those who they count on are nowhere to be seen, or at least for some group of people, and I speak explicitly about the political moment we're in today, Right? So if we have a president who marshals forces of hatred and anger and divisiveness and, frankly, just danger, quite aside from who he is, I'm not particularly interested in who he is, if the people who call themselves your friends are not going to push back against that, then maybe you can tell me why it is I should trust those people? Well, so I guess what you're saying is that people who don't agree with your politics can't be your friends, which I think is an unfortunate conclusion to reach, but it's different from the one you articulate here. You're making, again, for the third time, generalizations based on race, and the truth about the last election is, this is not a defense of Donald Trump, merely an acknowledgement of the fact that he received more African-American votes than any Republican since 2004. I think he had 8% of African-American men. So uh, that's not a huge number, well, but that's, that's tens yeah. of thousands of people. Are they in the same category too? Can you not trust them? I mean, I don't Look, really understand. I, if you're saying you can't trust Trump, Trump voters, fine. Sure. But white people? I mean, that's a grotesque generalization well, and a so divisive Tucker, I'm, one. I'm, I'm a little worried that you keep reading the same parts without, I mean, you would make it seem as though the entire piece was just that paragraph. So the piece goes on to well, it's say... it's the title of the piece, and it's in four that's right. separate graphs. That, yeah. So I, I have no problem standing behind the title of the piece, but it is worth pointing out, as I have again and again, what the piece says is, when those who count themselves as your friend see that others put you in danger, right. it, it is their opportunity to prove they're your friend. And if we have a... Let's be... Uh, let's just uh, speak plainly about this. Tucker, you have children like I do, right? I do. And if your daughters were, I don't know, friendly with a group of people, and it just turned out that repeatedly when they went out and your daughters were in danger, those group of young men just disappeared. I think at some point you tell your daughters, look, it's fine to be friendly with them, but these are not your friends. You yeah, can't but I count guess on I them. would, because I'm not a racist, what I wouldn't say is anybody of a certain race falls into that category. I would never do that. So and again, what, so if one of my daughters was mugged by someone of a certain color, I would never say to my daughter, that's more evidence you can never trust anyone who looks mm -hmm. like that, because I would be inculcating race hatred in my children, as mm -hmm. you are. So what I, well, I mean, obviously I deny that. Look, what I said over and over was, we live in a country where we oughtn't pretend that these divides have not consistently been on racial grounds. And we see that over and over and over. When black people are in danger... That's true. When I agree. Yeah, when black people are in danger from, say, addiction, we get policing. When white people are in danger from addiction, they get rehabilitation. When black I, people I, don't have jobs, we get uh, stories about why we're making the wrong choices. When white people don't have jobs, we get a presidential campaign about the forgotten class. Well, you know, so, it's, it's, so it's actually, it's, so to it's, be fair, look, I mean, so, sorry, these just are subjects conclude, I know a lot about, it, I think, and I think those I think are gross generalizations, so let me say, so don't I, accept them, but so I get your I'm, point. I'm going to go ahead and I'll finish, and then I'm, I'm happy to hear your point of view. So if it's the case that we live in a country where these divides have always consistently right. been racial, then I think it's not only delusional, but it would be dangerous of me not to teach my boys that when they walk out in the world, 
there'll be a world that treats them differently because should of their I, race. Should I say the same thing to my children? Yeah. That there yeah, are African-American law professors who dislike you because of your color and you should dislike them back? No. And yeah. all African-American law professors? I would never say that because that's grotesque. No, that's, and again, it's, it's race hatred. Uh, so, I mean, you, you keep saying the same thing, and I keep trying to say... Because I can't get past it. I, apparently. So what I've said over and over is, look, what matters when people are in danger, if yeah. you're going to say that you're the kind of person they can trust as a friend, is you have to step up. And when it's the case that these friendship lines break down on racial lines, then it's your turn to step up because of these racial lines. So oh. if I know that in my school there's a tense point because everybody hates the Filipino student, when the Filipino student walks into my area, I'm going to make sure that he knows I'm an ally. I'm not going to disappear when he's in danger. And right. then, no, I, I get and then that. placate and I, myself by saying, I'm his friend. I can't, no, but you can't I, have I it both ways. Agree. No, no, but I agree with you. It's when you implicate people you don't know, simply because of how they look, that you cross the line. Now, let me just ask you, and I'll end on a question and let you answer it quickly, which is, how would you feel if I told my children in an op-ed in the New York Times what you told your children, but the colors were reversed. Uh, actually, Sucker, can I ask you a question? Of course. Will you teach your girls to be cautious around men until they prove that they are men that can be trusted? Men, but not men of a certain race. Because, <laughs> I, because I don't right. think that the races are as different as you think they are. You think one is good and one is evil. That's what uh, you said in your piece. I, I didn't at all say that in piece. And if you can cite that, I'd be very happy to see it. But, well, you, but what you I did said say, you can't trust them. I, I did like, say No, I, yeah, I did, I I did say that. And I right. think in I the same way. I don't know if we're making headway. But I'm going to give you, no, I asked you a question. Can you answer it? How yeah, would absolutely. you feel if I no, wrote no, that piece? No, no, forgive me. You asked me a question and I returned the question. So I want to conclude on that. Look, in the same way that you will teach your daughters to be careful around men until they prove that they can be gentlemen. If somebody said, oh my God, that's outrageous. Tucker Carlson is teaching his daughters that men are evil. That would be laughable. You're when conflating you're sex with oh, race. Me, forgive me. Because, I, no, no, no. You forgive, forgive me, me no, because no, no. we acknowledge differences between the sexes, but not mm -hmm. significant ones between the races. Well, and so that's, that's sophism, yeah. what you're doing I right don't now. think it's sophism at all. I find it, it I find it remarkable that you can live in the America we live in and pretend that we oughtn't see that racial lines no, are no, equally that, that, divisive. That's not what I was saying. I said, okay. would you be okay with me writing this piece to my children if the races were reversed? Because the facts, the question. Because the facts are different, Carl, Tucker. Oh, okay. Listen, because one goes back. Teach, one's good. All that, right, got it. That's, um, that's absurd. If I don't it's teach my boys absurd. how yeah. to be uh, cautious, how to be careful, how to be perceived in the right way, All right. I'm not just risking their feelings being hurt. I'm risking their bodies being broken. Should I teach my kids that? You don't teach your daughters to be cautious until they can be sure that the men around them are trustworthy? It, it, that's tell me. Not, that's not what the conversation is about. It's not about sex. It's about race. Right. And no, so, I don't so teach then, them that there are so dramatic to be differences sure. between the races so, because so I'm to be not sure, a bigot. So to be sure, it's fine for you to care for your daughters and make sure that they're healthy and well. <laughs> but if I okay. care for my sons that in the is same way. That's some ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're out of time. Thank you, Professor. I appreciate it. You're coming on and explaining that. Thank you.